skills that students get by attending the uh, field school in archaeology are your very fundamental archaeological excavation methods. So how to plot excavation units, how to excavate them, and how to look for artifacts and identify them. So students get all of those types of experiences and those are the exact same things that you will go and do in the professional world. For the students, it's been a really good experience. My favorite part is watching them come in, not know what to expect, not know what to do, and then throughout actually learn how to be an archeologist. They're actually pretty capable of running a unit, setting up a unit, excavating, doing all the documentation on it all by themselves by now. And so I feel pretty confident that every single one of them will be able to go off in the future if they choose um, to be archeologists, to get into grad school. And it's been fun. They've been making good friendships, um, long lasting friendships, I think, for a lot of them. I definitely could see myself working as an archaeologist. I think it's so fun and the TAs, they really help us, especially when we're screening. We have screen talk and they really guide us and tell us, you know, what there is out there and how you can take this into a career and how you can set up your resumes and apply for grad school. So that's really helpful too. Dr. Wagner is great to work with. I've heard many of the students call him a walking database or an encyclopedia of history. He's been a great leader. Um, we have nicknamed him Wagner the Wise. We've learned a lot from him. So the purpose of this class is not only to educate students and teach them how to dig, uh, teach them how to put into practice what they have learned in their classes. So it's applied in that sense. It's a lot different where you actually have to do it. Unlike other years, we have moved it to a new location, which is Fort Kaskaskia State Park. And that is the location of a French fort built in the 1750s that later on um, is believed to have been rebuilt by the American Army and visited by Lewis and Clark. As the field school went on, it became more and more clear that there was no evidence that the United States Army had ever rebuilt that fort or was ever in that fort. So that brings up the question of where are they uh, up here? And there is a hill right only a few hundred yards away from the fort that is called Garrison Hill. I talked to the site superintendent. They had uh, repaired a water main last year and during repairing the water main they found a United States Army button that was the 2nd Infantry button. Well, that is the regiment that was here when Lewis and Clark were here. So, and it's not down in the French Fort, it's up here at Garrison Hill. So we had a 2nd Infantry button, plus the class, the leather stock class. And then uh, a couple of bullets have come up out of there also. So it's pretty clear that that's the location of the, of the American Fort now, which is a big deal because nobody ever knew it was up there. It has been getting damaged over the years. It has water lines running through it. It has a highway, not a highway, it has a road running through it because no one, everyone always believed it was down at the other location and they didn't believe there was anything up here. And so that's the important part of the field school now. So we're kind of shifting our research, trying to define the limits of the American form and get an artifact sample from it. And then we can go ahead and get a site form filled out with the state form, get its location reported, and that'll protect it from future development. We have this kind of funny ritual at the end of the day. After we dump out the remaining water in our igloo coolers, uh, we take the ice and we throw it at <laughs> we throw it at the tree, and it's just become kind of a fun little ritual that we have at the end of the day. The ice throwing ritual is a moment of bonding for uh, us here at the field school.